Welcome back ladies and gentlemen, my name is Camel and today we have a video sponsored by Destiny 2 in which we'll be exploring the game's newest expansion, The Witch Queen and the current season of The Risen, which together bring a ton, and I mean a ton, of new, fun, broad and most importantly easily accessible content for both returning and new players like myself. Destiny 2 is of course available on Xbox One, Xbox Series X and S, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and the Master Race PC, which is uh, where I played it. Now, if like me, you're stinging for some first person sci-fi shooters, well, this is a good one to get into. And the Witch Queen DLC is a great jumping in point as it marks the start of a new saga in Destiny 2's story, while also building upon what's already there. Now, I played a lot of the original Halo trilogy as a teen, so Destiny 2 was a great way to get back into that sci-fi FPS genre. I mean, proof's in the pudding, I sunk over 30 hours into the game just over the weekend alone. I was playing by myself, I was playing with other players, new players, seasoned players, and a mate of mine. It was just fun. Now, the Witch Queen expansion and Season of the Risen bring a wide range of new stuff to sink your teeth into. There's new missions, new characters, new weapons, new weapon types, new exotics, new armors, new skins, new vehicles, new ships, new ghosts, a new subclass overhaul, new locations, the list goes on and on. So where better to start than with my favorite first? the new weapon crafting mechanic. It's accessible after completing mission two of the Witch Queen DLC, which we'll do a little run through of later on. But this brand new weapon crafting system introduces a new level of user optimization and freedom of choice where once unlocked, you can create custom weapons with unique combinations of mods, shaders and advanced stat pools. So you can craft your preferred weapon with your preferred perks without having to, you know, search for the weapon, hoping to get it from just random loot drops. This is, in my eyes, fantastic and it lets you get straight down to business a lot quicker. Now with this new weapon crafting system, the first ever first person melee weapon type has also arrived, the glaive. Now, just like crafting any weapon, crafting the glaive will become accessible to you once you have completed the second Witch Queen mission. Now, the glaive is actually a pretty interesting weapon because it not only allows you to perform powerful melee combos, but can also fire projectiles and deploy a powerful energy shield. You know, for those moments where things get a bit hectic, which makes it an excellent all-round weapon. It's kind of like a really spiffy sci-fi Swiss army knife. And once you craft the glaive, provided you have the season pass, you can gain access to the season of the risen content. You can speak with Zavala in the tower's hangar to start this quest line. So now that we have our totally sick new glaive, what will we be fighting with it? Well, all hive gods keep a throne world where they can control and create anything they desire. Kind of like a plane of oblivion. Well, Savathun's throne world is no different. It's our new sandbox to play in, the new location. There are well-manicured lawns and castle-like palaces that sprawl into the gnarled, desolate and unforgiving swamps. Nothing will be as it seems. Treat even the ground you walk upon as a hostile. Zavathun with her trials and tricks will test more than just your firepower. You gotta use your smarts too. Luckily for me, I had a clever friend helping me weave my way through this new location. But fear not, there's always other players around who can help you out if you want it. Now here we can find a new raid, there's new strikes, there's lost sectors, there's weapons and armor and exotics, all to be conquered and uncovered here in Zavathun's throne world. But be warned as we also have new enemies, as Zavathun has gifted light to her hive followers, the Lucent Brood, allowing them light-based powers, the same kind of powers and abilities that you, the player character, can use. So prepare to have your own tactics and abilities used against you, as these new hive light bearers will come with new strategies born from this unnatural pairing. Now, this is the first time enemies will wield light-based powers in Destiny 2, presenting a new challenge to even veteran players. But again, fear not. With the glaive in hand or your newly crafted weapon of choice, I'm sure you can handle just about anything Zavathon throws your way. Now, with the Witch Queen's arrival, another very exciting new addition to the game has been added and is available for free to all players. And that is the new Void 3.0 subclass overhaul. 
This is a new way to customize and play with the Void subclass, which is the first overhaul of Destiny 2's elemental powers in Year 5. Arc and solar changes will come in the future. So Void 3.0 incorporates Stasis's aspect and fragment system to offer more variety in subclass customization. So now, not only can you hone and craft weapons to your liking, but you can chop, change, and choose specific perks for your Void subclass abilities, giving you, once again, even more customization and control over how you play and what you have to play with. Now, you want to get your Glaive and subclass in gear and ready for the new Vow of the Disciple raid. I personally haven't been brave enough to venture in there yet. I gotta get my light level higher, but that's uh, no problem, as it's always fun getting new gear and leveling up my dude. Now, there is also new tiered difficulty levels, which bring added replayability, including campaign missions. And of course, the legendary campaign will let you test your skills by completing the Witch Queen story on the new legendary difficulty. Be warned though, this ain't for the faint of heart. The clue's in the name, it's legendary, it's legendary difficulty. It's gonna be legendary. But players up to the challenge will be greatly rewarded, which I will get there one day. Now on top of Destiny 2's base game being free to play and on top of the Witch Queen DLC, if you get the digital deluxe edition, it will grant you access to Destiny 2's year five content, which includes the Witch Queen campaign and raid and four Destiny two seasons. The season passes can also be purchased separately if you so desire. Now the season pass includes exclusive content such as a new exotic weapon and an additional exotic weapon quest. There are armor ornaments to customize your guardian and it rewards each level with fat loot such as resources, exotic engrams and more. The more stuff you do, the higher your season level goes and the more stuff you get back. It's definitely a must have for any Destiny 2 players looking to get more from their experience. And it also grants access to exclusive weekly story content and PsyOps Battlegrounds missions, which delve even further into Destiny 2's evolving world. Now these will become available after the Witch Queen mission too. I personally am a big fan of the PsyOps missions introduced here. I played a lot of them. I will also say that I died a lot, but hey, maybe you'll do better than me. And on top of all of that, the seasonal artifact allows you to unlock weapon and armor mods that will change how you approach Destiny 2's combat each season. It's very helpful indeed. So now that we've run through all the major key points of Destiny 2's Witch Queen DLC, I'll give you a showcase of the first two missions. Of course, spoiler warning, but you know, it's pretty tame as the missions get deep and twisty as they go on. And there's a fair few of them. So we'll just show you the beginning to give you a little taste. The red planet Mars has returned. Here, we'll need to meet with Ikora at the Enclave as the Cabal have arrived with one big boy gun. As we stand there fearing that they're coming for us, another arrives, but this isn't Cabal. This is the Witch Queen Zavathorn on her extremely alien looking ship. As we trudge towards the Cabal Cannon, the surface of Mars is dotted with temporal instabilities, fractures in time that show us a glimpse of the Golden Age. These rifts and Zavathon's arrival are surely no coincidence. We must carve through some Cabal troops and power the launcher so we can get closer to the giant cannon. You see, we need to get inside and take our ghost to a console within. Be warned though, the Cabal won't let you simply walk into their Mordor. Upon inspecting the console, we will need to open the two fuel lines, which are heavily guarded, but it's nothing that you can't take care of. Now, once we have the gas running, the generators must be powered up before we can fire the Cabal cannon. So we got to collect two fusion cells and slap them into the generator to get that thing going. After which we will need to access the munitions lift so that we can, you know, load the cannon. To do so, we'll need to head down to the cannon control room. You see, the Cabal engineers carry override codes that we will need to collect so that we can gain access to the elevator. So once we get those, we can jump on the lift, the elevator, and get into the control room to realign the cannon to ensure that we don't miss our mark. Clear out the guards and get that barrel pointing in the right direction. So now that that's set up, all that's left is to load the damn thing. Load it with, well, actually, ourselves. The ones we're in, boom. Off we go to Savathun's ship, a place that no guardian has ever set foot on before. 
So we are actually exploring a stunning new territory here. So now we need to get in there and see why there are traces of void light on a ship, something that should not be here. Inside, we will find an alien labyrinth of obscure architecture, both futuristic and gothic in its fantasy-like aesthetic. Soon, we will encounter our first moth, which carries the light, like our light, like that of the Guardian, something that again should not be here, so things are certainly amiss. So once we reach this hangar, we'll need to collect five tributes, and while we do, be sure to be careful of those light moths. They can be very dangerous and painful. I also like that it seems to be some kind of pun, as moths like light and these moths carry the light. Oh, a moth pun. Now with the five tributes collected, we can move further into the ship, where again, strangely, we will find a pyramid technology statue, which is giving off strange energy readings. And laid upon it, we will find the artifact of the Black Fleet. Hmm, mysterious. We will need this for later on to start cooking up our own weapons and of course the glaive. But of course, straight after we get it in our hands, we will be swamped by the hive. So be ready for a hectic battle, especially if you're running solo. Further in, we will enter a cathedral-like chamber where we get a glimpse of Zavathun, but she will port away and in her place, a light bearer knight. This is one of those enemies that I spoke of earlier that can harness the powers of the light and will hit you with the same moves and abilities that you, the player character, can use. In fact, upon its defeat, it will be revealed that this light bearer from the hive even has a ghost, so the plot thickens. After we defeat it again and crush its ghost this time, we need to grab three more tributes and then we can jump into the portal and follow Savathun. Now where we come out is the new location added with the Witch Queen DLC, Zavathun's Throne World. These beautiful ice blue citadels rise in all directions with a palatial grandeur. Shortly after heading inside, we'll see Savathun once again. Naturally, she won't give us a moment of her time until we batter her hive minions through and through. Then, oh my, oh my, we'll actually be fighting the Hive Queen Zavathun. Seems a bit early in the storyline for that, but uh, all right, I'll give it a red hot crack. Now, while Zavathun is not easy to defeat, she was in this fight at least far too easy to best. It did seem too easy, didn't it? <laughs> ah, she pranked us. Oh, <laughs> good one, Savathun. After she makes a mockery of us and spits us out, we'll find ourselves back on Mars, where we'll need to head back to the Enclave and meet with Ikora. After speaking with her, we can head down and inspect the Relic Resonance Engine. Once we do this, we will have access to the weapon crafting system that we spoke of earlier, and of course, we can now cook up our very first and own glaive. Once we've done that, we can also speak to Ikora to get our seasonal artifact to gain access to all of the benefits it possesses. So now with our glaive and our seasonal artifact and a taste for the Witch Queen, you are ready to continue the mission and unveil the strange story surrounding Zavathun, the Witch Queen and her return. But what I've shown you is just the beginning. For the rest, well, you'll need to experience that for yourself. So if you are stinging to get your hands on with a first person sci-fi shooter, come jump into Destiny 2 The Witch Queen and Season of the Risen and um, <clears throat> you can help me out in the raid. So with that, I look forward to seeing you in Destiny 2. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to Destiny 2 for sponsoring this video and quite frankly, introducing me to a really fun game. And I'd also like to thank the Geek GG for helping me out. I've been Camel, and I'll see you very shortly in the next video, but uh, hopefully sooner than that, I'll see you in Destiny 2.